Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to what is session four now of our virtual sessions. Uh, since COVID, we've gone like many have to Zoom and uh, we're not meeting at the classroom, at least currently. Uh, for those of you who are um, joining us for the first time, just a quick background uh, on the program. Uh, we started a personal development, career development program three years, three years ago at Oak Grove High School, two years ago at, at North Davidson High School. And the central theme of the program uh, is what would I tell my high school age self? So we've gone virtual uh, over the last few months. And today we are very, I'm very excited about this um, on a personal level and professional level. A longtime friend of mine, Dolph Ramsour, uh, has joined us. Um, for those of you that do not know Dolph or have not heard of the Avett brothers, one, you need to check out the Avett brothers. Um, but uh, two, you're, you're in for a treat. Um, I think you'll learn a lot about the music industry, hopefully in a short amount of time. He is the founder of Ramsour Records. Uh, he is the manager of a the Avett brothers uh, out of Concord, North Carolina. Uh, several other musical acts. So Dolph, first of all, welcome. And if you would just give us a quick little overview of particularly when you went from uh, your, what I consider pre avit Brothers days to uh, when you met, uh, as you say, the, the, the brothers uh, and kind of take us from there, just to give us a, a little bit of a background there. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm from Concord. Uh, which is not far from it seems like everybody except Bennett who's in my, Ohio but I know Bennett's from what Lexington North Carolina Bennett Charlotte right? actually oh, okay well, my you, dad's from Lexington right. yeah he's from Lexington so um, but yeah I um, I always was a fanatic when it came to music and I love music and I really didn't know kind of how to get into music um, but I, it was probably my number one passion in life. And so um, I started, I, be, I became friends with some musicians essentially. And I realized quickly that they needed help. Um, and I was able to um, kind of see the opportunity there where I could offer them some help and, you know, make a living out of it. Um, and one thing led to another, started working with some artists. And then my mom told me about this band called the Avett brothers who are from my same hometown from Concord, they're from Concord. And I had another musician that I was working with tell me about them. And, uh, I went to go see them and started working with them not long after. And, um, you know, I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I didn't have any bad habits either. Uh, but I had a passion for it and just, um, you know, every day was, I was kind of learning something new and learning what not to do. And, um, yeah, sort of developed into my livelihood and how I make a living. Great. Great. Thank you. Now I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm from a, a cotton mill town, which that might, not mean a lot to y'all. I mean, uh, Bennett, your dad could tell you that like Lexington, more of a furniture town at one point, um, textile, some furniture, high point Lexington area. Winston Salem, of course, was tobacco driven. So, um, but I will tell you a quick little story. So when I was, uh, in elementary school, I had family members that worked in the cotton mill. And I learned quickly that I did not want to work in a cotton mill. And most people in Cabarrus County, about 90% of the people in Cabarrus County, the county I'm from, were associated with the cotton mill in some uh, form or fashion. And they would make, at the mill, they would make 300,000 towel, 300, towels a day, uh, plus sheets, plus handkerchiefs, and, uh, you know, anything linen, they would make it. Um, and we had a teacher that uh, brought in newspapers on a Friday and said, next week, we're going to talk about the, um, industrial revolution. And she broke us that Monday. She broke us up into five different groups and we all would, uh, for like three hours that day, you know, we would 
work on folding the papers, then the others would work on cutting with scissors, the papers in half, and then the others would fold the papers, and we were making paper airplanes of all things. And so, sure, we all thought that was great because we didn't have to do math and we didn't have to do health or science or whatever it was, we didn't have to do it. We were making airplanes. And you would work in a station every 30 minutes, you would change. Um, well, Tuesday, we did it for three hours. Still pretty good because we didn't have to do math and reading. And Wednesday, we started complaining about it. Did not want, and nobody really wanted to do it. Thursday, everybody hated it. Friday, do we have to do it? And she made us do it. And at the end of Friday, she said, and this was a big red flag for me in my life. I mean, one of the best learning experiences I ever learned in school was, she said, if you don't pay attention in school, this is what it's going to be like when you work in a cotton mill. So that was a big eye opener for me that I did not want to work in a cotton mill. So most of my life was spent knowing what I did not want to do first and foremost, more than even what I wanted to do in life. So uh, I don't mean to ramble on about that, but that was something no, I really, I'm glad you shared that. Cause that's, you know, that was in what you say third grade. No, no, no. We, I think I was in fifth grade. Okay. So that was in fifth grade. Yeah. And that you're quite a few, I won't say how many years, but you're quite a few rem years removed from uh, yeah. fifth grade now, but that stuck with you. And yeah, another thing, John, one time me and you were playing tennis. North Davison had just built these new tennis courts. We're playing tennis there. And they're actually putting in the – the guy was working on some lights. And this guy was up on this pole. And, man, that guy looked like – he had leathery skin. He was probably in his mid-60s, early 60s. And I remember him watching us play tennis because we both were good tennis players. He's watching us, and when he came down, he walked up to us and he says, whatever y'all are doing, y'all keep doing it because you don't want to do what I'm doing for a living. Ah. Wow. And I remember that like, yep, that those things just stuck. Like, I don't know, that stuck out to me on, uh, yeah, you don't want to do a lot of hard manual labor for a lifetime. So, uh, so you, at, an early, at an early age, it was more of, what you didn't want to do versus what yeah. you did want to do as far as your motivation goes. And your Correct. Your Correct. Commitment. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, I mentioned that Dolph and I are, uh, and I've got a couple of questions I'm going to run by Dolph and uh, the students. We're going to let the students ask questions. So Dolph and I have known each other since we were probably 12, 12 or 13. Yeah. Yep. Uh, played, um, Junior tennis in North Carolina. Played with Bennett's dad, Peter Louder, and um, tell me, tell us, Dolph, share with us what what things from tennis characteristics, um, yep. qualities, so discipline or perseverance. What, what are some things that help helped you in tennis? Because I want to also add a little context to this. Dolph is in the music business, and he's known for music and his success in music, but he went to college uh, and got his degree in professional tennis management. And was a very competitive junior tennis player and went to Ferris State University where he got his um, professional tennis management degree. So that was what you plan to do. So yeah. tennis, obviously a big part of your life, big part of my life. What are some of those things you learned that transfer that helped you with your well, quite a bit. I mean, you know, with tennis, with any sport, you have to be disciplined, you have to work hard, and you have to, you know, you have to find out what you do bad and work on your weaknesses, but then you find out what you do really well and, and keep hammering home what you do well. Um, but then above and beyond just playing the sport, tennis, golf, I think those are the two primary sports to me that stand out where, you know, you learn a lot about sportsmanship and how to behave and how you can learn a lot about someone on a golf course or a tennis court, like their, you know, character comes out. 
their right. character and, and um, you know, to me, those are two sports where you need to respect the game. Maybe other sports you do. I don't know. Those just stand out to me. And, um, but, um, yeah, I felt – I mean, I learned so much playing um, and had the opportunity – I mean, the kids that I grew up with who all, you know, again, their parents were either working in the cotton mill or just were the first generation outside the cotton mill. never had the opportunities to – playing tennis tournaments, go around the state, playing, meeting all kind of different walks of life of people and going to country clubs. And, you know, I never was a member of a country club growing up. So it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was an awesome thing and I'm very thankful for it. And I've never, um, not, uh, you know, I took advantage of it, you know, the best I could. So sure. yeah, I mean, it was a great, um, yeah, you can just find out so much about, um, about yourself on, and other people on a, uh, playing those sports. Right. Yeah. Right. So well, let's fast forward, um, to your professional career. You were in tennis, yep. uh, you worked for your father-in-law, did some venture capital work, uh, yep. before entering the music. And that's a story in and of itself, just that transition from what you did previously to the, to the music industry. But, and that's hard to believe that's been what? 20 years, over 20 years now? Yeah, I've been doing it now 20 years. Um, and to be honest with you, I mean, I'm, I wake up every day and I'm learning something new about the music business. I mean, it's not like I've got it all figured out um, and I'm willing to learn. And I don't think I'm the, you know, the greatest thing since life's bread when it comes to, I mean, I can still learn a lot with this business. And I got a lot of smart people that I've surrounded myself with. You know, I've got a great team that works for me. Um, and then I also, I feel like I've been very good at pairing up with some uh, great bands and artists that I work with. I've been lucky to select some artists that, um, yeah, that are hardworking people, have, have good morals and, um, yeah. So I've been lucky with that as well. Well, well, I just say, and I'm, you know, I'm your buddy, but I will say this and, because I believe it in um, all sincerity. You, there's some luck, but you've worked your tail off, and, and it took yeah. that, and you know, discipline and perseverance. So uh, if you guys don't know, and I think most of the students, if not all the students that are on are familiar with the Avett brothers, but the Avett brothers have uh, been on the Grammys. They opened for Bob Dylan, along with Mumford and Sons. Um, they've been on Jimmy Fallon 11 times, Dolph. I think it's about 11 times, maybe five times on Kimmel, been on Ellen, been on the Today Show, been on Letterman, Conan O'Brien, uh, all of those kind of things. I think the only thing we really haven't done is Saturday Night Live. Yeah, but but it's not always been like that, right? It no. Like that. Can you tell not, us about just a few, a little bit just on um, those first couple of years, the try like, today's topic trials tribulations rewards but i would say also just for me one question i'm going to open it up to the students what was the biggest obstacle that you think that you feel like you overcame because obviously starting your own business there's plenty of them you know it which which one which obstacle was would you consider like the biggest obstacle um and why uh well music is a funny thing it's um you know, when you think about, when you think about stars and celebrities, you know, you're thinking about like Whitney Houston, or you think about Beyonce, y'all probably know Beyonce and you think, you know, Adele and you know, um, uh, Drake. And, um, I guess the way we kind of did it, you know, we were maybe perceived as a local band. Um, so we were not, um, uh, the brothers, the Avett brothers have never really had a hit song. I mean, they've had a lot of songs that have, uh, gotten radio airplay, but not a hit song like Beyonce or, um, Katy Perry or, um, but it's never been about that to us, uh, or the brothers or to me. It's, um, so I think being perceived as local, 
has always been one of the, a big obstacle because people would not see the band or hear the band on radio all the time and or see them do a, a you know a Super Bowl halftime show or whatever it might be uh, but that did not mean that we didn't that we were not moving the needle we were just doing it in a totally different way where we didn't need American Idol or the voice or right uh, and all those tv shows and if saturday night live never happens or the tv shows that we've been on it's never been really about let's get on tv it's always been about making great songs and great records and great art and connecting those uh songs and performances with the fans that's what it's always been about and so but yeah i think this local thing you know uh, I don't know. That's always sort of stuck with me that um, I just remember I had some family members, like when we first started, they were like, well, when are y'all going to play the Charlotte Coliseum? I mean, we're playing to 200 people yeah. and they automatically think, well, you should, you're a failure if you're not playing the Charlotte Coliseum. But, you know, you see over someone that has an overnight success and it's never – an overnight success. It's usually averaged out to about seven years of busting your butt, working hard, getting your craft, getting your, you know, what you do, working on the things that you need to work on, getting better. So, yeah, I, I guess, um, and it still kind of drives me that we're sort of still maybe perceived as the local when I know, you know, if we go to Colorado, we sell thousands upon thousands until we go to San Fran, we sell thousands of tickets. Right. And people really don't know. I mean, a lot of people have no clue. Right. So. How many, just out of curiosity, I think that everybody would be curious to know. I know I would. How long was it from when you first met the Avits to when y'all did play Charlotte Coliseum? Uh, I think from 2003, I think it might have been 2008 eight or 2009 when we first played what I consider the real Charlotte Coliseum on, on Independence Boulevard. Yeah. Then maybe it was 2012 or so when we played the one where the Hornets at the time it was the Bobcats. Now it's the Hornets. Um, so it and took you about, met them, and you, met them, you met Scott and Seth, those guys in what year? So 2002 and really started working officially in early 2003 so quite and, a few, quite a few years there. Yeah, about nine years to get into the big room, and and a little shorter to get in the what I consider the real Col Coliseum. Yeah. yeah. So, so I want to definitely have time for student questions. Um, so if and then we've got some lightning round questions we're going to throw in here. If we have all right. not time permitting. So students have questions. Uh, Bree, I believe you've got a you have a question. Uh, yes, sir. What would you say is the biggest misconception people have about being a music manager when it comes to reality versus perception? Well, you know, I, I wonder sometimes if people think I'm just uh, sitting back um, listening to music constantly or um, uh, yeah. watching old Andy Griffith episodes. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, I deal with a lot of email, hundreds of emails a day, um, a lot of text with artists and people in the industry. So it's, uh, it's almost, um, it's not, um, what, how should I put it? It's not, um, I mean, it's still kind of, in, in a lot of ways, it's still a blue collar kind of stay on it kind of you cannot take your eyes off the wheel or your hands off the wheel and eyes off the road uh you know it it's um i don't know maybe people i don't know if the perception that this is some kind of that it's not a real job i've kind of had some family members i think f feel like this is some kind of hobby yeah, uh, would you say would you fair was it fair to say that when you're in a position like yourself, you've got a, you, you represent a well-known band. People feel like you've kind of, you've got people that do things for you, which in a way, I mean, you've got people that are part of your team that are responsible yeah. thing, for things, but 
but there's so much like the when we talk about the weeds being in the weed you know a lot of the detail stuff you're still doing that it's not like oh yeah you're just every day I mean, listening to music yeah i mean it's every day is is connecting the dots that need to be connected and making sure nothing gets dropped and a lot of balls are always in the air and you got to make sure you tend to every single one of them so what what makes it all worth it Oh, well, there's a lot of satisfaction. I mean, gosh, if y'all could read some of the emails I get about, uh, you know, what the music of the bands I work with, you know, how much it makes an impact on people's lives. I mean, that, I mean, that, that's a big deal about it. I mean, I think that's pretty, yeah. I mean, there's so many heartbreaking stories, but then so many stories that are very inspirational too. And, um, so yeah, uh, I mean, well, I know, I do know, and you know, us being friends as long as we have and as close as we are, I know that David's. Uh, I'm not quite as familiar with the other groups of what you guys do in the community, but I know the Avett brothers, uh, as a band, do do a lot and give back yeah. in a lot of ways, and a, a lot of those things don't ever make the headlines. No, no, knows about lot, yeah, yeah. A lot of times we, we yeah, correct. Yeah. So, um, see, Camille, do you have a question? Oh, yes, I did. Um, what type of characteristics or qualities do you think are important in starting your own business and why? Well, let's see. I think one has to be a go getter. Uh, you also need to, uh, not be afraid of the unknown. Because uh, whenever you start something, you're always going to, you know, not have every single answer. So don't be afraid to ask some questions to people that have been there before or get on Google and find out how something works. Um, you know, um, having a good gift of gab, meaning you're not afraid to talk to people. Um, you know, business is not going to come to you. You got to go to the bit. You got to go to it. You got to go get it. It's not, you know, people aren't going to just start knocking on your door. So, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, um, being, uh, having some, uh, and then you got to, you got to also build up. Uh, you're going to be told no a lot. A lot. Uh, thick, thick skin, right? Thick skin. So for every one yes, you're going to have about a hundred no's. And you can't let those affect you or get you down or think that uh, the end of the world is happening. That's right. <laughs> you got you to gotta just keep soldiering on. Yeah. So. Okay, we've got uh, time for one or two more questions from the student. Um, Tyler, Bennett, did you get about Tyler? You have a question? Yes. Um, if you had to choose one thing and looking back at your journey with the Avids so far, what would it be and how would you do it differently? Well, one thing, boy, you know, man, I mean, we've had such a great run. Um, I can't really think of anything that I don't really think we've got major, not from my perception. Now the band might, you know, I can't speak for them. But I think they've had a heck of a run, and uh, we've done it without any artistic sacrifices. So I can't really put a negative spin on it, or a, or a, any. Yeah, I mean, um, do I wish they would have number one hits? Sure. Do I sometimes? You know, are you sometimes the old saying, "Be careful what you wish for," because the Avits have never worn out our welcome. They've never gotten people that are sick of them and sometimes a band or a brand or you know a celebrity can be become so popular that you don't want to you don't want to hear about that celebrity or that artist anymore so yeah i think we've we've been lucky we've been able to kind of do it our own way bennett you got any questions bennett, do you have, did you have a question or uh yes i actually did come up with the question um so you you saw this uh the need the need that bands well the need that brands needs pretty much um so 
you're talking with these bands, you want to manage them. Um, yeah. My question was, how did you establish yourself as a brand pretty much? Good question. That took a little bit of time, you know, uh, man, working at country clubs, Ben, it really helped me out because, you know, I would be 16 or 17 years old and have to take someone that was sort of well-established, a well, a business person in the, the community out on the tennis court and teach them how to play. Uh, that was kind of an intimidating thing, but man, I, that was like throwing somebody right into the frying pan. Um, so the music, same thing, you know, I would just, what I would really do is just try to convince the artists that, Hey, I want to work with you. I think I can help you out. And if you give me the opportunity, you know, I'm learning, but I promise you, it's, if I don't have the answer, it's not going to, I will get the answer. And, uh, if you put some trust in me, we, we can do this and we can do it together and I can, um, I can help you. So that, but you know, again, that came out, that came over time. I mean, I've, I've learned so much and I'm still learning every day. So yeah, I, I, I'm not, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Um, oh, that was yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You definitely have to kind of throw fear out the window or at least yeah. not throw it out the window, embrace it and say, you know, I, I'm not going as far as an initiative, talking to people, approaching people. Do you agree? You've got to yeah. just not be afraid of that. Yeah. And there's another saying I always have is that, you know, if somebody hasn't told me that I'm crazy at least once a week, I'm not doing my job. Uh, now I, I can't say it. Oh, I love that. I, I, I remind myself of that. I don't know. I use that, that sometimes. I don't know if that's just for the music business, but listen, the music business is the wild, wild west gang. And it is nuts in a good way, but it's, um, there's some crazy people in the music business and you got to sometimes just, you got to just get as crazy as they are. So, yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to make sure we, uh, in the spirit of th throwback Thursday, I want to okay. make sure we have some time left here for our, our lightning round questions. Uh, very quick to the point and um, go back to the eighties and I guess in some of them. So uh, just real quick, uh, Dolph, share with us um, car that you drove in high school. I had a 1971 orange beetle bug. I rode in that car a few times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was um, not built not built for speed nor <laughs> com nor comfort, but it got me there. Got got you to got you to from point A to point B is what you needed, right? That's right. All right. So, uh, favorite um, musical artist in high school? Oh, well, you know, I was a massive Jimi Hendrix fan. I still am a big Jimi Hendrix fan. Um, yeah, there's not very many weeks I don't get on YouTube and search Jimi Hendrix clips. Uh, and I don't know if y'all know who Jimi Hendrix is, but he famous guitar player and great songwriter and great singer and died way, way too young, way ahead of his time. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Four people you would have dinner with if, if any four can be li living or deceased, just one dinner. Uh, I would probably say Bjorn Borg, which, um, Bennett, have you heard of Bjorn Borg? Do you know who he is? I have. Yeah. Uh, he's a tennis player. Now breed, you know who he is? Tyler Camille. Okay. Well, Bjorn Borg, you need to look him up. He was a freak of nature within himself. He was, he was one of a kind kind of guy from Sweden. I would say Borg. I would say Jimi Hendrix. Maybe uh, Fred Belitnikoff, who was a wide receiver for the Raiders, and then maybe Johnny Dawkins, Duke basketball player. Yeah, absolutely, great one. He was my, he was my hero as a kid. Hmm. Favorite Avit song and favorite non-Avit song. Yeah, I would probably say it's a tie. One, there's a song called "No Hard Feelings." And then there's a song called All My Mistakes. Both of those songs, 
do it for me. Um, and then for favorite non even song, I'd probably say, I love this song called The Killing Moon by Echo and the Bunny Men. It's probably mm -hmm. my favorite song. No, that started, I know, back in high school. Listen, yeah, I was a massive um, Bunny Men fan, yeah. yeah. I still am. So, okay, in 60 seconds or less, share, and this can be built off anything, personal, professional, it can be one thing, two or three, 60 seconds or less, what would you tell your high school age self? Oh, I would probably tell myself to study English classes a lot better because I do a lot of writing and I'm bad about run on sentences. I'm bad about uh, just, uh, yeah, English 101. I'm always asking my wife, where should I phrase this? How do I phrase this? That's probably, and I'm not that bad of a writer. It just my, you know, it's just getting it onto paper is the issue. So I would say that's, yeah, I wish I would have paid better attention there. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It makes yeah. two of us. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see. One, you got time for one or two more golf when we wrap up. Okay. You got so, two minutes and 50 seconds here, John. Yes, exactly. So that's I'm right. On I'm on it. So, you know, some of these questions up or from me, some sent in. Um, so what, when was the last time you beat Peter Louder in tennis? Boy, that probably would have been in about 1983, four, it's a long time ago. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so Bennett's dad, Peter and Dolph played doubles together in juniors. So yeah, we did, we did play and, and Peter was a, um, he was a good tennis player uh, and always a gentleman. Bennett, mm -hmm. your dad, true gentleman on and off the court. Can't speak highly ab enough about him. Yeah, I echo the same. Yeah. And uh, well, I guess this, this uh, another question just in, uh, and uh, there is representation from the Lambert family. The last time you beat Andy Lambert in golf. Uh. Well, you know, Andy has a, Andy has more talent than I do on the golf course. Maybe I have been able to play a little bit more than Andy, but uh, in all seriousness, and I'm half the golfer that Andy is. Good golfer. Well, you're being humble. He just doesn't play. He just does not play enough. You're less being... than a minute, John. We got less than a minute. Yes, we do. We're uh, one minute. One minute remaining. I've enjoyed so, uh, one question from a student while we've got one minute left. Anything? Any Hail Marys? Well, Dolph, let me just say uh, on behalf of the students, everybody out there, uh, we will be sharing this. Uh, students, whether you're on the call or not, the Zoom call, uh, if there's a question that you have for Dolph, email me and then I will send it on to him. I'll be happy to yep. answer it for you. Okay? Dolph, yeah, thanks thank for having you. Yep. Well, I'd love to get you guys' contact information so I can follow right, up good. here with an email. I will be I'll be in touch with your dad about it. All right. All right, brother. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank bye. you very much. Bye guys. Bye.